Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. If you're loving what you're hearing on the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, go out and tell two friends today. Show them how easy it is to subscribe to the show. The Real Estate Espresso Podcast can be heard on more than 20 different platforms. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you're sure to find the show. Spread the love around. Why keep all this goodness to yourself? On today's show, we're examining how we select projects to work on. I'm often asked by both friends and listeners on the show how we decide to take on a specific project versus passing on an opportunity. Fact is, there's no exact science, but we are looking for certain characteristics. It starts with the people. Are the right people involved? If not, there's no sense starting on the project. Then we need to look at the market and then finally, the specifics of the deal. I always want to be in an area of strong demand. We want to see population growth. We want to see a shortage of supply and we want to see resistance to development. That sounds paradoxical. Why would a developer want to work in an area that's pushing back on development? It's a balance. We want some resistance so that we maintain that supply, demand, and balance, but we don't want so much resistance that it becomes impossible to get projects done. Number two, simply buying a property that has no distinguishing features is not very interesting to us. We believe we're on a mission, and that mission is to create communities that people feel at home in. They want to feel connected. The community has to exist for a reason, not just cheap housing. So let me give you an example. Our latest project is the design of a new residential subdivision in the outskirts of Boise, Idaho. Boise is a city that seems to be attracting people from higher density communities on the West Coast. They're moving for access to the outdoors, for the lower cost of living. The city is number four in the country in terms of growth. There's a massive mismatch between demand and supply. Recent survey of the home listings found only 154 homes for sale of all descriptions. The average days on market was five and a half days, and prices were up on average 13.5% so far in 2020. When we found 45 acres across the street from a brand new high school, with new infrastructure including roads, a water treatment plant across the street, ample electric supply, we saw a lot of potential. And we're not a fan of auction situations because we almost always end up paying too much in those situations. But in some cases, we will engage in the auction if the numbers make sense, and this was one of those rare cases. The property is located on the edge of a suburb called Middleton. Middleton has grown by nearly 50% in the past couple of years. And future growth will require annexation of more land from the county into the city. Even with the tremendous growth, there's next to nothing for sale. Any development land has sold out very quickly. So we saw this project as an opportunity to participate in community building. We had direct talks with the planning department and with the mayor. We understood what the sentiment was within city council. We felt we could develop a winning concept in the area that would truly add value to the community. Now I know what you're thinking. How is it that some dude up in Ottawa, Canada is having conversations over Zoom with the mayor in Idaho about developing a new neighborhood thousands of miles away? You see, Middleton has another problem. 85% of the people who live in the community don't work there. How could we be part of that solution? Now, we're not talking about necessarily building lots of commercial property. See, the work-from-home phenomenon is not just a temporary pandemic solution. Even once the pandemic is over, there will be a residual and substantial portion of the population who will want to work from home. And when you consider the design of most homes, even recently designed homes, the question of workspace has been largely ignored. This particular project, represents a unique opportunity to create the live-work-play type of community. We held our first community meeting last week with local residents, and we shared many of the design concepts. It was an opportunity to hear firsthand from local residents how they felt about development in the area and our concept in particular. It goes without saying the project would meet our financial criteria. The other major criteria has to do with the makeup of the core project team. You can't do the right project with the wrong people. Next, we need to be clear on whether the project leverages the skills we have in the organization. If we don't bring something unique to the table, then it doesn't make sense for us to become involved. And finally, is this project going to be an isolated project, or does it form part of an ongoing stream of investment projects in the area? Developing expertise in a particular market takes time, and an investment in building relationships. For that investment to make sense, you need more than a single project. We might be presented with a single specific opportunity, and we're not making a forever decision, but at least we can clearly see that the area has potential for an ongoing stream of investment. We want to assess the risks of the project. What's the upside? What's the downside? And can we live with the downside scenario if it came true? When all of these elements are present, we have the makings of a successful project. So to recap, we start with the people, 
we look at the specific stock market, and then finally, the specifics of the deal. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.